okay so in today's lecture we are going to uh, discuss the next uh, topic of uh, ideals uh, which is called as maximal ideals so these are important ideals in ring so in this uh, lecture basically we will try to talk about maximal ideals and if i get time i will also talk about prime ideals so these are two important types of ideals that we will look up for okay so let us focus on the maximal ideals first so what is a maximal ideal okay uh, if r is a ring and m is an ideal of r then i will say that m is maximal if uh, first of all m should be not equal to r m should be different from r okay and what and no proper ideal should be containing m no proper ideal should contain m means what is the meaning of this if i see this simple picture you immediately understand so this is the uh, ring r first of all m should not be equal to r so m should be contained inside it's an ideal so it should be inside r okay and what you should not be able to find a ideal which is larger than m you should not be able to find such an ideal means what means all ideals must be what must be inside this particular m okay zero ideal is always there right zero ideal is always there singleton zero is also an ideal okay so with this means that m should be the largest such ideal and that is why we are going to call it what we are going to call it the maximal ideal it means you should not be able to find any bigger ideal than this ideal in that case i will call this ideal to be a maximal ideal okay if you just work up with the definition you will not be able to find what are the ideals of a ring so some important theorem will help us to find all the maximal ideals of a ring so we are not going to prove this result so see this result is very important i will mark it star so r is a commutative ring first of all i will need a commutative ring with unity okay so this means that this theorem i will apply only if the ring is commutative ring and what is most important part it must have unity then m is a maximal ideal if and only if the quotient ring r by m this quotient ring is a field so this means that this theorem is going to help me to identify the maximal ideals okay and how am i going to identify i will calculate r by m and if r by m comes up to be a field then i will say that the ideal will be a maximal ideal now what is the application of this particular theorem and how are we going to look into problems related to this okay so let us take one simple uh, app so before that let me just recall one important result all of us know is that z p is a field what is p p is a prime this one important result will help you understanding the the importance of or the role of maximal ideals okay so let me go to the application let me take one example as an application of that theorem so suppose i'm talking about the ring z12 okay and i'm going to take an ideal m suppose i'm taking the ideal m is uh, now z12 contains what z12 contains 0 bar 1 bar up to 11 bar correct and i'm going to take uh, 0 bar 
3 bar, 6 bar, and 9 bar. Okay, now this M is a subring, it's a subgroup of Z12, and, and all the properties of ideal will be satisfied. And this will be what? This is an ideal of Z12. In my earlier lectures, I have told you, I have actually taught you how to find ideals, okay, of Zn. Right. So in that way, I have written one of the ideals of Z12. There are many other ideals also. So now this is the ideal. Now what I will do is I will consider the quotient. Uh, so my question is, is this M maximal? So is M maximal? Now when you look at this uh, M, I don't understand whether uh, the definition is satisfied or not. So what I will do is I will simply just calculate what? I will calculate R by M. Okay, now this is meaning that it is some calculate Z12 by M, the quotient Z12 by M. Okay, and uh, when you calculate the quotient Z12 by M, what I understand is that the order of this group, if I look at the group, what is order of Z12 by M, what is the order of this quotient? We know in your group theory classes, we had proved that this is nothing but order of Z12 divided by what? Order of M. Correct. So what is order of Z12? Order of Z12 is 12. What is order of M? How many elements is M containing? M is containing four elements. So this means that order of Z12 by M is what? Three. So this so Z12 by M contains how many elements? It contains three elements. Right. So Z12 by M contains three elements. And do we know a group or a ring which contains uh, three elements? We know that that element is, that set is Z3. So this means that Z12 by M is isomorphic to what? It is isomorphic to Z3, okay? And what is Z3? Z3 is a Z3 is a field because I have just now told you that ZP is always a ZP is always a field if P is a prime number. So Z3 is a field. This means that Z12 by M is also what? This is also a field because it is isomorphic to Z3 and Z3 is a field. So Z12 by M is a field and therefore this theorem now tells us that if r by m comes up to be a field then what can i say about the m the m that is coming here has to be which ideal has to be a maximal ideal and therefore this means that by the virtue of that theorem above we can now say that the m i had that i've written here was 0 bar 3 bar 6 bar and and nine bar is actually what is a maximal ideal, okay? If we take different ideal, let me take a different ideal now. Let me take an ideal M, which is given by only zero bar and uh, let, let me take zero bar and two bar with the four bar, and six bar, eight bar, 10 bar and 12 bar, which is zero bar. Okay, let me take this M. Now, is this M a maximal ideal? So again, I will use the same logic. I still, I know that what is the order of Z12 by M? The order of Z12 by M is 12 divided by M has uh, six elements. So this is two. So this means Z12 by M contains how many element? contains two element and it is therefore isomorphic to what it is isomorphic to z2 and we know that z2 is a field and therefore i can say that z12 by m is also a field and this eventually means that the m that i'm talking has to be a maximal ideal okay if we instead of this if we choose m to be an ideal suppose i take 0 bar 4 bar 8 bar and 12 bar which is again 0 bar in z12 okay now what can i say about this m is this m a 
maximal ideal let us check that so when i calculate the order of z12 upon m i understand that it is 12 upon how many elements does m have three elements so this is four and therefore z12 upon m is isomorphic to z4 okay i can say that it's 100 percent z4 because z12 by m is cyclic and therefore we know cyclic group of order four is z4 and therefore this uh, this is isomorphic to z4 but is z4 a field is z4 a field so the answer is is no correct so z4 is not a field and therefore z12 by m need not be a field okay actually it's not a field okay therefore z12 quotient m is not a not a field and therefore what can i say about this m we the theorem was if and only if is z12 upon if z12 upon m is a field if and only if m is maximal so this means that this m is actually not a maximal ideal of what of z12 okay you can clearly see that the elements of m that i've chosen what were the elements of that m the elements of that m were 0 4 bar and 8 bar right if i draw a picture of this ring z12 i can see that 0 4 bar and 8 bar this is the ideal. can i find a larger ideal than this because it's we have concluded that it's not maximal ideal. can you find a larger ideal than this yes the larger ideal than this is what zero bar then we have discussed it here see zero bar two bar four bar six bar and eight bar right so there is a larger ideal namely zero bar two bar four bar six bar and eight bar which is contained which contains this smaller ideal and we have proved that this is maximal ideal zero bar two bar so this ideal is contained in a larger ideal namely zero bar two bar four bar six bar eight bar ten bar okay that ten bar is also there yes okay so therefore this ideal is contained in a larger ideal so how can this ideal be a maximal ideal that is what we have concluded that this ideal is not a maximal ideal okay now as a consequence of uh, this important theorem that we have just now discussed is that we know that uh, the only ideals of field are there are only two ideals of a field what are the two ideals the ideals of field are either zero or the field itself so a field has only two ideals okay and therefore by the above theorem you can now write some important consequence what is that important consequence let me write it if i have a commutative ring with unity then this commutative ring with this unity is a field if and only if it has no proper non-trivial ideals this is one of the very important consequences of the theorem remember the theorem was true for which type of rings it was true for commutative rings with unity okay and therefore by that theorem i can further say that if you have a field then you cannot have non-trivial proper ideals in that particular field okay so this this result we will be using in our upcoming problems okay now let us move to a new definition which is called as prime ideal so let me define what is a prime ideal so let n be an ideal which is not equal to the full ring in a commutative ring r 
n is set to be prime ideal if a into b belongs to n implies either a belongs to n or b belongs to n so this is the definition of a prime ideal where, where, where what are a and b where a and b are elements of the ring okay so see this definition is very uh, is not very easy to understand so let me just draw one simple picture Okay, so I will have a ring. I'm having an ideal N. And when am I going to say this ideal is a prime ideal? I'm going to take directly the multiplication of two elements. And if I take two elements and their multiplication, and if I understand that this multiplication, now where are, where is A and where is B? A and B can be anywhere, okay? A and B are free to move anywhere in the ring. A and B are elements in the ring. They are not inside the ideal, okay? See the definition carefully. I'll go back to the definition. The definition is saying what? It is A and B are any elements in the ring. But what is the speciality? A and B are anywhere, but A multiplied by B is coming inside the ideal okay then if i can guarantee that either a has to be inside n or b can be outside or either b is inside n or a can be outside or a and b both also can be inside n so some one of them must be whole what is the if product is inside n at least either a is inside n or b is not b is inside n but a is not or both a and b also can be in there but both should not be outside it should not happen that a and b both are outside this is not allowed okay so if you can guarantee that such a either of these three cases hold and if this is true for all the products a b which are inside the ideal then i will say that the ideal is a prime ideal okay i hope you are clear with it now so let me just take one simple example this example will clear most of your things so we'll take the ring r equal to our simplest ring z so I'm having all integers. Okay. And which ideal I'm going to consider? I'm going to consider ideal as singleton zero ideal. Okay. This is an ideal of Z. Because singleton zero is a subgroup of Z. So it will also become an ideal of Z by definition. So this is the only ideal that I've got. This I am looking at this ideal, okay? And uh, I want to check. I it's ideal n. I want to check is this n prime ideal? Okay. So now take any two elements whose product is inside this n. Now, which two elements would you like to choose? You will say choose uh, A to be say three and choose B equal to zero. You have to choose the other element zero because otherwise the product will not become zero. What is AB? AB is equal to what? AB is equal to zero, which is lying in what? Which is lying in the ideal, right? Or you even have a choice of choosing A equal to zero and B equal to three. In that case also, the product AB will come out to be what zero, which is in the ideal. You can also choose A equal to zero, B equal to zero, both are zero. In that case also, the product AB will be equal to how much? The product AB will be equal to zero, which is inside N. You cannot choose A equal to two and B equal to three. Otherwise the product AB will not go inside the ideal because the product must be zero. 
so this means this indirectly is trying to tell us that if if a b a into b is inside n okay this means that a into b must be inside singleton zero this means what must be product a b the product a b must be equal to zero because there is only one element in this set therefore a b must be zero and what are a and b a and b are any integers right but we know that z is an integral domain if product of two numbers is zero in an integral domain either one of them has to be zero so either a is zero or b must be zero this equivalently means that a must belong to singleton zero set because a is zero right or b must belong to the singleton zero set means b is zero this means that a belongs to n or b belongs to n and if you look at the first line and you look at the last line this will tell you that the definition of prime ideal is satisfied the definition was saying that if a b belongs to n then either a belongs to n or b belongs to n in this case that ideal will become a prime ideal so this means that we have proved that the ideal n given by what the ideal n given by singleton zero in the set of in the ring z is which kind of ideal is a prime ideal okay